Bowling. The Savage Speeders are Marbula One World Champions. The Crazy Cat Size, Clementon and the Arrangers. The Savage Speeders, they've done it. Let's get ready to roll. This season's third race brings us to a familiar venue in the O-Raceway, a track that has been on the calendar every year of Marbula One. It's famous, or for some infamous, sand section. Quite a classifier. Let's see what it does to the field today as we set the order for the Grand Prix tomorrow. Hey, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. This track started us all back in season one and it has been on the calendar ever since, delivering twists and turns and the occasional sandy marble at the end of the lap. However, despite being home of the O'Rangers, they have never found much success here. They have never gotten a pole position, they've never got a fastest lap, and they have never won the race at their home track. In fact, points have even been difficult to come by. We'll see if that changes today. Points on offer for the top three positions in qualifying, but first, we get started with Q1. These marbles that you see on your screen right there are the Chosen 20. They will come out and run one lap apiece, singularly in Q1, and at the end of that, the bottom 10 will be eliminated, and the top 10 will move on to Q2. Orangen starts us off. And a big cheer from the home crowd as we see the familiar O Raceway. Just some slight modifications this year, but this sand portion can make or break your lap. Swinging under the crossover. Down this back stretch, around that left hander, and over the line to set a 25 9 7. That starts us off. Rima comes up next for Team Primary and goes quicker in the middle sector. Bolt is also on track higher up. Rima goes second. Lost a lot of time in that first sector. Was able to claw some back, but not enough. A pretty good entry, I'd say two thirds, through that sand portion for Bolt, who goes nearly three tenths quickest of all in the middle sector. Thunderbolts go third, wow. This first sector is really make or break so far. Yellow for Mellow Yellow. That's a big margin in the middle. Needs to gain a bit more here in the third. To claim top spot, doesn't. Lost a bunch, actually. Wispy coming up now. Ran one race ago and got zero points to show for it. You'll see a few marbles now that we're getting farther into the season begin to double up. Sometimes, whoa. And that was a good recovery. Wispy goes up into second place. You'll see some teams that alternate their marbles every race, but strategy sometimes dictates that one marble might be better on a certain track, so they will sometimes run two races in a row. Lemon Lime goes fourth. As we are on our seventh runner of the first half of Q1, it's Siren for the Oceanics. That is how you navigate that sand portion. That was really good. And gain some time. The more you can stay off those walls, the better. Can you carry the speed through here, Siren? It was mixed. Lost so much in that first sector. Look, I mean, case in point right here for Mimo, for Team Momo. Lost half a second in one third of the track. Was able to bring a little of it back. Mimo scored two points one week ago. Around the turn, sixth. Stinger coming up now. This is one of those alternating marbles. Did not race in race two, but did in the first round. Yellow's on the board here, meaning that you are losing time to the leaders as you go through these sectors. Green means you are going quicker. And purple means you are fastest of all in that particular sector. Speedy needs to live up to the name here. This has been a rather slow start for the Savage Speeders. And there you go. Purple in the third sends Speedy to the top of the chart. 
at the end of the first half of Q1. Speedy got five points last week and is hoping to build on that this week. Cloudy for the Hazers out on track. And Hazers haven't seen a great deal of success so far. Cloudy sits in 17th in the standings. Hazy in 21st. Just eighth for Cloudy. Now that we are in the second half of qualifying, you will see colors on the scoring pylon. Green means you are guaranteed to move into Q2. Red means you will not advance, and your grid position is set for wherever you finish at the end of Q1. Quasar, decent run there at the beginning, but was unable to bring it home. Sits in eighth, perilously close to the cutoff point. Royal for the Cobalts. Three tenths up in the middle sector. That's a decent time. Can the speed be brought through to the end? Yes. Royal goes up into second and is safe. You may have also heard a secondary cheer there because Orangen is also safe. The O'Rangers will have home representation in Q2. Mimo, Bolt, and Yellup are out. What does Ecto do to the order? Goes into fourth and into safety. Cloudy is out. Pinky Toe for the Pinkies. 19th in the standings. Well handled middle sector. Oh, a glancing hit off the wall. Shoots that marble sideways. And that lost a lot of time. Pinky Toe is now on the bubble. Everyone down through Wispy is safe. Razzie, that was a great line. Through the sand, and look at the dividends it paid. Nearly seven-tenths gained. What can Razzie do around the final turn? Goes P1. Razzie is safe. Pinky Toe is out. And that shows you that there is time to be gained through that sand portion. You can try to dismiss it. You can try not to think about it all you want. But every lap, that sand is going to be there, and you're going to have to face it at some point. Disarray, only 14. Snowy, three-tenths up in the first sector over everybody. Picks up another quarter of a second in the middle. Snowy for the snowballs. He won by a margin. This is a team that after not being in Marbula 1, is thrilled to be back. The snowballs are on a charge when it comes to qualifying. Billy, another marble that always does well here at the O-Raceway, goes up into second place. Perhaps unsurprising. Look at the line that Red Eye takes. That is expert. And purple through the first two sectors. I don't think we've seen a marble do that this late in the game. Red Eye cruises to P1 as our final runner and will start on the front for Q2's shootout for pole. Well, some of the expected runners, Raspberry Racers have done very well of late. Billy likes this track, but the Snowballs have captured pole position in each of the first two rounds of this season. Can they make it three in a row if they want to, they'll have to get by Red Eye. And we're rolling to start Q2, and there it is. Snowy immediately to the lead. Excellent launch off the line. Red Eye manages to counter back and stops Royal from what would have been a second place and immediately sets that marble sights up to Snowy in first. A couple of nudges on the wall slow everybody down except Billy. That marble cruised through the sand and now goes up into first. Snowy and Red Eye perhaps were so busy worrying about each other, they lost the focus on nailing that line. Red Eye goes to the inside. There's Orangen right behind. The crowd here, willing that marble onward through the sand once again, and Billy has no trouble at all. Snowy still locked in that battle with Red Eye, and there's Rima getting by Orangen. Rima, nice run down that back stretch. This is gonna be very close up the line. Look at how many marbles are close to that third position. 
Who gets the better launch? It's certainly not Snowy. Bounded into the wall, coming off of the conveyor belt. Billy around that hairpin. Good moves through there. Snowy also gains some ground. The Orangers try to get up there, but couldn't do it. Contact out of the sand. Oh, that's going to happen quite often. Around the final turn, that's nearly a dead heat. And Billy will hold on for pole position. Red Eye will get second place. And Snowy in third. Nailing the sand was absolutely crucial for Billy, but Red Eye is not gonna go away. And you have to think this is a preview of the race tomorrow. These are two marbles that really do like this track. Billy, fastest lap and the race win back in season one. Billy did it again in season four, got pole position there. In this case, pole position nets three points for the Green Ducks and for that marble in particular, that will help in the championship standings, but will it translate to a win tomorrow at the O'Raceway?